RCTP level four cross training. The first exercise are weighted pull-ups. Now you might struggle to just do one pull-up. Um, I know I did at the beginning, so I had to lose about 10 to 15 pounds. And I also started training this on an assisted pull-up device. Um, that might be the way to start to get into just doing regular pull-ups. And then um, it can seem a little daunting at first to be able to do a weighted pull-up. Um, but just to show you that it is possible, um, I asked Renee to do weighted pull-ups at the end of a three and a half hour climbing session. You want to work your way up to weighted pull-ups. Um, here you can see Renee attached something to her belay loop of her harness. You can also find um, a weighted belt that you can use in the gym. Most people use this for like weighted dips. So just a reminder that this is what you want to work your way up to. And you know, Renee is a small woman. So if you feel like you can't do weighted pull-ups because it's too daunting and it's too hard, I just wanted to show you that it is possible. And remember, she did this after three and a half hours worth of climbing. So you can find a weighted belt inside of any regular like weightlifting gym and you can just tie it up around your waist and you can start to put on like a small weight. Um, in the previous video we did see Renee lift a pretty heavy weight and you know that might seem fairly daunting but I just wanted to show you that it is possible and uh, just remember that we all started with a small weight so who cares if you're starting with like 5 or 10 pounds you know what that still is 5 or 10 pounds more than what you used to be able to do. So recognize small gains and slowly build your way up. At this level of rock climbing you're going to have to start to train a little bit of your power so that you can make it into other moves. So once you start to hit the 10D to 10 or to 11A range you start to hit into slopers and you might be like okay well what do I do to start helping me with slopers? Well let's look at this first movement. If you have a sloper on the side of you and you have to hold it like this and I'm pushing in the motion that I'm actually making is like this. So what do we do to help train this motion? Our pectoral flies. Pectoral fly. Okay, so if you don't have access to a fly machine, this is a way that you can do flies with a simple bench and uh, some dumbbells. So you first wanna load the weight onto your thighs like I'm doing right here. And then when you come back, you kick it up and you put the weights into position. And then I'll slowly punch the weights up into the ceiling. And then what I'll do is I'll, when I'm widening these moves out, I'm making sure to keep my arms slightly bent just to stop from any like tweaking on some of my muscles and joints. If you notice I'm only at 15 pounds, you don't need to be that high of an olive weight. You can start at two and a half pounds. To come out of it, I do the reverse where I load the weights first onto my knees and then I rotate up. Our second set of slopers can be directly above our head. When we're holding this move, what we're actually doing is we're pulling down and pushing towards the wall. So what does this look like? It looks like a move like this. How do we train that? We do serratus pullovers. Serratus pullover. For a serratus pullover, what we do is we load the weight in a similar fashion, but we also kind of stop at our chest level to help rest it. Um, you might be able to do a heavier weight. Here I have a goblet type of hold on the weight. But if you notice, I didn't really like that first position, so I move my thumbs around the bar of the weight, and then I just pull over like this. Again, you can start with a low weight and slowly work your way up, but make sure you don't go too heavy, and so you don't like hit yourself in the head with uh, this exercise. Our third sloper can be a combination of these two, where it's off to the side. And again, we're kind of pushing both into the wall um, from above, and we're also pushing both into the wall from the side. So the best exercise that I've found to work this out are to do dive bomber push-ups. Dive bomber push-ups. To perform a dive bomber push-up, I want to make sure that my feet and hands are in a wide position. And what I do is I slowly lift myself up like that and I push myself back. This is the movement. Curve yourself up, curve yourself down. You can maybe make your hands a little bit wider and same with your feet. This is great for practicing and working on slopers. To demonstrate why the contact strength drill is so important, we're going to watch Renee jump and hit the sloper. Now, without strong contact strength, she wouldn't be able to hit that move and continue going on this route. Contact strength drill. You might have a system board like this somewhere in your gym, and which has a whole bunch of slopers or these like very positive slopers somewhere. So what you want to do is slowly start to grab these holds. I'm actually going to campus this route, which is what you eventually want to work your way towards. If you can't campus it yet, 
at the bottom of this wall there might be some places for your feet to go and just practice going like up and down one or two of these holds with your feet still on the wall and eventually work your way to the campus. Another drill you can perform is to do a double dyno. This is something that you want to practice after you've mastered campusing going up and down the wall.